Now let's take a closer look at how G-protein linked signal transduction works to produce the second messenger molecule, cyclic AMP, in target cells. The G-protein is the three subunit protein in shades of yellow, alpha, beta, and gamma, initially bound to GDP. This protein is called the G-protein because it's either bound to GDP, or as we'll see in a moment, to GTP. When the signal molecule, here shown in blue, binds to the cell surface receptor, which is shown in green, the receptor changes shape and can bind to the G protein. This binding causes an allosteric change in the G protein, leading to GTP displacing the GDP. In turn, the GTP bound alpha subunit dissociates from the rest of the G protein. The GTP bound alpha subunit now has an affinity for and binds to an inactive adenylyl cyclase enzyme, the pink membrane protein, changing its shape. Now active, the adenylyl cyclase catalyzes the formation of cyclic AMP from ATP by hydrolyzing the phosphate linkage between the alpha and beta phosphates on the ATP, and then creating a cyclic compound. Cyclic AMP is produced faster than it is degraded as long as the hormone remains bound to the receptor and the GTP bound alpha subunit of the G protein remains bound to the adenylyl cyclase. The cell, in other words, will keep making cyclic AMP to sustain the cell response until levels of the signal molecules drop in the blood, as illustrated here in the animation. The hormone on the receptor came off, setting off a sequence of allosteric changes that are the reverse of what happened during signal transduction. The GTP bound alpha subunit eventually dissociates from the adenylyl cyclase, rendering the enzyme inactive. The GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP, and the complete G protein simply reforms. Here is how cyclic AMP is formed and destroyed. You can see the formation of the cyclic compound first, and then you can see phosphodiesterase catalyzing opening of the cyclic compound to leave behind just plain old AMP.